Input shaping is a revelation in 3D printing, but to get it, usually you have to change your firmware to Clipper. Now, thanks to the GH Enterprise Smart Shaper, input shaping is firmware independent, letting you up speeds and acceleration slash print times without any loss in quality. Input shaping, firstly introduced by the firmware Clipper, is amazing. Faster prints, but without the usual losses in print quality. It magically makes ringing just disappear. But to use it, you had to change your firmware to Clipper or perhaps RepRap. And that's a technical task not everyone is interested in or even capable of. But now we have another solution that is separate to the firmware. Let's start by explaining what ringing or ghosting is. As we up speeds and especially acceleration, 3D printing becomes a lot more violent. The vibration of the mechanical parts can be seen as an artifact on the surface of the 3D print known as ringing or ghosting. Some printers suffer from bad ghosting even at low speeds because they've got a particularly heavy print head to move around. But in any case, we should notice that the oscillations seen on the surface repeat at a regular interval and this is related to the resonant frequency of the machine. And that brings us to what is input shaping. A technical explanation is that it's a control technique for reducing vibrations on our 3D printer. But what you really need to know is that it's a way to print fast, but without the usual reduction in print quality. Clipper uses the processing power of a Raspberry Pi to modify the signals sent to the stepper motors. Because if you know the resonant frequency of your printer, you can make compensatory alterations to keep everything steady. And ultimately that means we can speed up our prints without encountering ringing or ghosting. Marlin firmware, which is found on the vast majority of 3D printers, actually has input shaping in the pipeline but it's not available yet. But thanks to GH Enterprises in Italy, we can now use input shaping with Marlin and any firmware in fact. And that's because the modification of the stepper motor signal happens on the stepper motor driver itself, independent to the firmware. A pair of these stepper motors for X and for Y are currently selling for 40 euros, which is certainly a lot cheaper and easier than buying a Raspberry Pi and converting your firmware. GH Enterprise sent me some of these drivers to try out free of charge after agreeing to my review policy. Hopefully you're excited by the possibility, so let's have a closer look and work through installation and setup. On the product page, we have much of the information that we need, including a data sheet, a hard copy of which is included in the box, the user manual, which covers most of what you need, but there were still some things that were unclear, so it's currently undergoing a revision to fix this. The G-code generator spreadsheet, as well as the calibration model, which we'll work through later. My target printer for installation is one of the oldest 3D printers I own, and one that I don't use very often, as you can probably tell by this layer of dust. It's a TiVo Tornado, which has had a few modifications, and I think it's ideal for this test. Firstly, it's a bed slinger and that bed is big and heavy and the moving parts for the x-axis are heavy as well because it's previously been modified to have a dual switching extruder. These heavy components mean that if we try an upspeed or acceleration, we're going to encounter significant ringing. And there's not much that can be done about that because I'm still running the old 8-bit MKS Gen L mainboard. Therefore, these smart shaper drivers should transform the printer. The first thing to understand is that these stepper motor drivers are TMC 2225s, and that's a functional equivalent of a TMC 2208, just with a different footprint or what is known as package. TMC 2208s as well as these drivers have two options for installation. The first, which I'll be doing, is legacy or standalone mode. That means it plugs right into the main board, but there's no serial connection to enable the TMC smart features, and we need to also manually set the current going to the motors. What will be common for most people is connecting these in serial or smart mode, where we have a UART connection to the firmware, enabling the firmware to talk directly to the stepper motor drivers and use G-code to set things like stealth chop or spread cycle and the stepper motor current. In these cases, installation is pretty straightforward. Inserting a jumper in your mainboard to enable UART mode, plugging in the new Smart Shaper driver, checking the pinout to ensure correct orientation. In firmware, in this case Marlin, for TMC 2225s, we just set them as a 2208. So with this UART connection, we would set our X and Y drivers as TMC2208. Depending on your old stepper motor drivers, you might also need to invert the direction for X and Y in the firmware too. 
And after you've flashed the firmware, you should now be able to see that it talks directly to the Smart Shaper driver, and you can use G-code like M906 to set your stepper motor current and other parameters. So Smart Mode is straightforward, but what about in my case, the simpler Legacy or Standalone mode? Before removing my old X and Y drivers, I firstly needed to measure their VREF, convert the VREF back to the max current each stepper was running, convert that again to suit the VREF for the new Smart Shaper drivers, only then could I remove the old stepper motor drivers, install the Smart Shaper drivers with their heat sinks in the correct orientation according to the pinout, and then adjust the trim pots until I reached my target values. In terms of firmware for this configuration, we set up the X and Y drivers as TMC2208 standalone. Upload to the mainboard and I was done. Although I did notice the distances were rough when moving the machine manually, and to fix this, I needed to correct the micro-stepping by removing the left-hand jumper from the MKS Gen L board. You'll notice when powered up that there's a status LED that changes its rate of blinking. These drivers reset every time they're powered off, therefore on startup, we should have a flashing frequency of half a hertz, which indicates input shaper off. And that's exactly what we have. The light is on for one second, off for one second, or half a hertz. Installation done, but how do we program them? with the help of a test print. On the product page, we can click to download the calibration model. It's not so much a model as it is pre-sliced G-code, already set up to run on the majority of Cartesian 3D printers. Before printing, the only changes I made were inserting G29 for auto bed leveling and adjusting the hot end and bed temperatures to match what I normally use. When printing this file, the acceleration will start conservative at 500 millimeters per second per second but a G-code command is inserted at every layer change to increase this value quickly. On the early layers of the print, you'll notice the movements will be quite sedate, but as the tower grows and acceleration is increased, you'll notice the changes of direction are much sharper and more violent, and the aim here is to induce ringing. After some time, your printer might not be able to keep up, or perhaps the oscillations on the surface are really noticeable, and in either of those cases, it's acceptable to stop the print early. In my case, the test did a great job in showing ringing that would be easy to observe. The next part of the procedure is documented very nicely in the manual. We mark the same point on each oscillation with a pen or marker, doing so for both X and Y. And yes, the printed labels are on the correct side. We then need two values. The first is the amount of marks we've drawn onto the test model, in this example 6, and then the distance between the first and last marker in my case, 18 millimeters. And of course, we need the same two numbers for the y-axis. The formula we need, as well as a worked example, is in the manual. Substitute in your numbers and you'll have the resonant frequency for both the x and y-axis. In my case, 27.8 hertz. And for the record, Clipper uses pretty much the same technique to manually measure resonant frequency. Let's now use this data to program the smart shapers. Our next download is a G-code generator, which is actually a spreadsheet. The formulas didn't work with Google Sheets or my old version of Microsoft Excel, but I did convert it to Excel format and get it working on the free online edition of Excel. In quick response to my problems, GH Enterprise has developed a web version of this, so it should be easily accessible for everyone. Everything here is well explained by the manual, and this is less complicated than it looks. For now, we only need to worry about two things. The first is either selecting the X or Y axis, and the second is inputting the frequency we measured for that axis. And if the configures are okay, the spreadsheet will output some G-code, which is used to configure the stepper motor drivers. We need to copy this G-code for both X and Y as they will be different. And this is what the output G-code looks like. We have comments at the top with the settings that we input, and then we have a sequence of movements back and forth that the Smart Shaper driver is listening for and will interpret as instructions. We have a set of these for X and then a set of these for Y. And when this G-code is run by the printer, this is what it looks like. A second or two of fast vibrations for X, followed by the same thing for the Y axis. The whole thing is over really quickly. And after this, you can confirm on the drivers that they're programmed because the LED frequency has increased to one Hertz. So what do we do with this calibration G-code? Well, I think we have three options. The first is for any files we've already sliced to paste it into the start. You can put it somewhere after the homing sequence and remember to paste in X as well as Y. If pasting from Excel, you might have these quotation marks, so make sure you find both of them and delete them. 
An obvious step is to paste in the X and Y sequences into your Slices Start G code section. Just like before, somewhere after the homing sequence, paste in the code for X as well as the code for Y, and then the sequence will run at the start of every print, programming the smart shapers. Another option is to set up a dedicated G code file that just runs the sequence and nothing else. This is really simple. In a text editor, you set up homing for X and Y, then paste in the sequence for X, followed by the sequence for Y, and save with the file extension .gcode. If you want to turn on input shaping without printing an actual file, you simply print this file from the SD card, the sequence will take place, and the input shaping parameters will stay in place until the machine is powered down. Honestly, this probably sounds a lot harder than it is. In summary, we install the drivers, create the test print, measure the frequency, and use the generator to make the setup G-code, and then paste that into our slicer. So with everything in place, by now you're probably wondering, does it work? Before fitting the smart shapers, I used my free calibration website to generate an acceleration test. It went from 500 up to 1500 over the six bands. And as you would expect, by the top, this high acceleration induced obvious ringing, particularly on the Y axis. And here's the exact same G code, except this time with input shaping turned on, a dramatic improvement. We also have a before print for the test model. And once again, ringing is dramatically reduced, particularly for the Y axis. Also remember that the acceleration is crazy high by the top of the print, so we can disregard this section. And for more of a real world test, I printed this miniature castle several times. Here's the baseline print before any modifications. It's not too bad. There's a tiny bit of ringing, but it's actually quite subtle. Not a fantastic print, but not too bad. And here's the same G code when I turn the acceleration from 500 to 1500. There's quite a lot of ringing around the print, especially on areas like the roof. And finally, when I turned up the acceleration to 3000, it was layer shift after layer shift and the print was unusable. And on the right, we have input shaping with an acceleration of 3000 versus the original print. And I would say it's at least as good. Now we compare 1500 acceleration on the left versus input shaping with 3K on the right, and we have a clear winner. But here's the clincher. The original print took two hours and 50 minutes, and with the smart shapers, we've taken an hour and 15 minutes off that with no loss in quality. And this is why input shaping is such a big deal. One more thing, you might be wondering about the shaper algorithms. Well, I was too, so I outputted code to set up for each of them and printed them all back to back for comparison. There wasn't a huge difference between them, but in the end, I picked my favorite for X as well as Y, and that was the code that I used in my slicer. There's more documentation for this on the way, so hopefully trial and error won't be required as much. Clearly, this is very effective, and as this printer demonstrated, I was able to slash print times without any loss in quality, but there still are some limitations you need to be aware of. First and foremost, you can only use these smart shapers if your main board has empty stepper motor driver sockets. If you have a main board with integrated drivers, it'll be no good and you will have to change it. Secondly, the smart shapers are only compatible with printers that have one stepper motor per axis, like this Tornado that has a clear X stepper as well as a clear Y stepper, independent of each other. These smart shapers are not compatible with machines that use a combination of steppers for X and Y movements, such as a Core XY, and of course, a Delta 3D printer. Input shaping for those machines needs to be handled by the firmware. In my opinion, I feel this is a pretty good step forward, but more importantly, I'd love to know what you think. Let me know in the comments section if this is something that you might be interested in. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy, fast, and efficient 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.